Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the Eastern Jungle, right on the river just southeast of the Wreck of the Wagtail, building a river fortress. This build was suggested by Madara El Uchia on my Yamatai Castle build guide, so thanks for the suggestion Madara. Seeing as this is of course a speed build, let's get started right away. This build is something I've been thinking of for a, a good while now, although I didn't really know exactly what design I wanted to take, however, Madara's suggestion kind of pushed me towards this design, which I'm pretty happy with. This fortress is designed to be well defended, yet easily accessible, and is able to hold the eastern river that runs through the exiled lands, allowing trade boats to pass through the river, whilst also keeping eastern battleships at bay, forcing any attacking troops to either retreat, trek through the arduous jungle on foot, or risk being annihilated by the defensive forces and emplacements on the fortress itself. In terms of inspiration, this build was somewhat loosely inspired by the Twins, the seat of House Frey in the world of Game of Thrones. Whilst the Twins uses a two tower format with a large tower on either side of the Trident River with a long bridge stretching between them, I instead decided on two smaller towers on either side of the river with the fort in the middle of the waterway to allow for both a more interesting design and a better tactical position from which to defend the waterways and fire upon enemy ships. Whilst the twins were an inspiration, that castle is designed to protect the river and allow crossing only at that point, whereas this is designed to protect the whole waterways of the exiled lands and allow or of course disallow crossing through the river. I decided to use the Savage Frontier DLC almost exclusively in this build, as it suited almost exactly what I was looking for in terms of material and texture design. The Frontier pieces are dark and intimidating from the outside, which definitely suit the purpose of this fortress, though the lighter wooden tones of the interior helps make the fortress feel a bit warmer and safer, as it should be. For me, Frontier is one of those materials that can be a little bit hard to work with at times, as it seems to be very specific in terms of the environment it suits. For example, it doesn't really suit the frozen north, and I don't really think it suits the deserts. However, this is exactly one of those environments that it does suit, and it does look great on the river. Had I used another material choice such as stone or even arena, the build would still look good, but I just don't think it would suit the vibe I was looking for for this build. So I think that's about all I have to say for this build, so we're going to let the speed build roll on. As always, if you enjoyed this video leave a like, and feel free to follow me on Twitch and join our Discord through the links in the description. You can also help support the channel on Patreon through the link in the description if you so wish. Also as of last night, we have officially passed 1 million total channel views, which is kind of crazy to think about. I remember when I hit 100,000 and I was I was extremely pleased about that and now we've hit a million. So uh, I think the next milestone for us is 5,000 subscribers which should hopefully be soon. So thank you all so much for the support on every single video and, uh, and I can guarantee I'm going to be continuing to make content in the future. So as long as you guys keep coming and enjoying the content, more will keep coming. So without further ado, enjoy the rest of the build and I will see you in the furnishing phase.
Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've used hanging and wall torches and ancient braziers to light the build primarily, using lanterns to add some small fill lighting where applicable. The bridge is a long extensive structure that gives some really nice scale to the build and truly does make it feel quite massive. Heading down to the left on the bridge, we reach the boat dock. This is a storage facility that takes in deliveries to the fortress, along with checking the cargo of suspicious vessels before letting them pass into the exiled lands. This basement level feels nicely cluttered, but also fairly spacious, and with all the water around this level of the build, it adds a nice atmosphere. Heading upstairs to the first floor we reach the indoor and outdoor dining rooms. This is where all the soldiers, crafters, engineers etc within the build will eat and drink, with the sailors that reach the build eating food on the outdoor dining areas. Crossing the build we reach the workshop. This workshop is spread across the outdoor porches and this indoor section, splitting different crafting stations and disciplines across said sections.
Heading up to the first floor, we reach the residential floor. This is where the residents of the fortress sleep and live when they're not on duty, along with this floor also having alchemy stations for the resident alchemists and storage facilities as well. This floor is the largest within the castle, though the way I've structured the rooms make this floor feel almost like a maze, with the large section between the bedrooms right in the middle creating a small amount of breathing room on this floor. Heading up to the roof you can see how I've redesigned the river facing parts of the roof to include trebuchet emplacements to fire upon enemy warships. The placement of the fortress is so deep within the river that it will force enemies to retreat back the way they came, meaning the ships will have to stop and either slowly turn or move backwards up the river, making these usually difficult trebuchet shots much easier to land on the large eastern warships. This floor is also manned by various warriors and wizards, and is the perfect platform for archers to shoot down at sailors disembarking their destroyed ships.
And there we have it, a river fortress was in the eastern jungle, just southeast of the wreck of the wagtail. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Madara for the suggestion. This was a pretty huge build, and took about 5 or 6 hours of straight building and decorating, but I enjoyed it. If you've also enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos. As usual, absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. YouTube is currently my full-time source of income, so if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, please do consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support, from $1 to $20, offering many different benefits, from a mention in every video to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note, a thanks to our current patrons Sammy, Sir Dialot, Randar, and Dawnfox. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Conan Exiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Also, I have already said it, but thank you so much for 1 million total channel views. It's, I keep looking at it, it's still crazy. It hasn't quite sunk in yet, a million total views, but you know, I do appreciate all the support. It's, uh, it's been wild, and I think it's only going to get better from here. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.